Hello everyone. Here is another one of my earlier films at the renowned Whitfield Estate. This was filmed October 20th, 2015. The weather was perfect shooting weather. The first real cold snap of the season. The birds were outstanding and very, very challenging. To top it all off was a magnificent scenery as the beautiful colours of the season were just beginning to show. This is what I feel makes great memories of Alcyon days in the field. I hope you enjoy this revisit to a favourite part of the English countryside. Thank you. Once again, thanks very much for, for joining us at, on, a, on one of our high birch shoots. This, this shoot hasn't been filmed before, it's the, the famous Whitfield shoot. And in no doubt you're in for a very, very good treat today. What's it like to be back at Whitfield? It's a fair while since we've been here, isn't it? Yeah, but it's a lovely place to be. It is. On the different colours. Yeah, yeah. And the trees. Yeah, to yes. be honest, it's a bit late, it's a bit... Um, there's nothing changed colour really yet. Uh, Stuart was remarking that it's... It's actually a bit, uh, a bit later this oh. year. Oh. The colours have, uh, it's a bit, uh, been a bit late coming. The, the leaves are not falling as no, fast no. and that's probably because it's not been cold enough. I think this is the first really cold day we've had. It's, uh, it's about one degree at the moment, so which is ideal for shooting, but obviously we, Stuart needs some leaf off the trees to, to get these uh, pheasants moving. I'm shooting the MK60 cross MK38, the one that, uh, Browning have kindly made for me. I'm still awaiting the pair. That I think is still in build. It was supposed to be in October. It's it's a bit late. So hopefully we should have them in November. I'll just mention that to David Stapley when we get home, Jonathan. Uh, but this has been working fine. We're only single gunning today, just stuffing. So uh, we'll see how it works today.
straight on that anyway. Yeah, we shot some good bubbles here, didn't we, mate? Glad to be back, Stuart. Nice thing, Andy. Yeah, <laughs> fant and I mean a fantastic exhibition of yeah. birds there. Unbelievable. Good, good and you were you were a little bit, bit perturbed really whether you know, we're going to get them through woods or something. Weren't you? That's what well, you were saying. Well, a lot of cover. Yeah. You can see see it, the leaves yeah. are late. They, yeah. they ain't coming off, are they? Normally by mid-October we're in full swing. And yeah. I think Well, we're just just reaching it now. I think yeah. because the first two weeks were pretty yeah. average to be honest. I mean, good yeah. good birds. But yeah. Not, some, no, any other some, some fantastic. This is one of my favourite drives as well. I know yeah. it's. It's one of your favourite drives for showing good birds as well, isn't it? It's scenic. Yeah, it's well, very like scenic, it, yeah. You know, a, lot, yeah. a lot of places, uh, you know, your drives are in, in, in featureless valleys without yeah. trees and things. Yeah. There's one thing you can't label this drive as not being featureless, yeah. and it's fantastic, but isn't it? I like to go to every kind of shoot I can go to, and that's what me and Jonathan intend doing over the next two or three years, is going to as many, de well, as many different shoots as yeah. possible, with different yeah. backgrounds, same as you say. Yeah. Wales is not like Yorkshire. No. Yorkshire's not like Wales, and, and it's not no. like uh, like the uh, the big Devon shoots. No, they're all. You know, it's all different yeah. topographies. Yeah, exactly. We're lucky to be able to start shooting in, in mid October on these drives. Really. Yeah. So a lot of the drives don't really come into their own until mid November. Yeah. So this, this is this is one or two drives that we can. You know, I can verify around. that some of these birds in November are another they're ten yard up. They're a little bit further up. They're a little yeah, bit further up, and they, but there were some bloody good birds here too. Pick them. Yeah, yeah, pick yeah there were some yeah. good birds in. Some fantastic shooting as well, yeah, all the way down I, the I line, really. The actual shooting was very good. Nice. <laughs> no, I didn't say how well I I said how well you. That's what I say. I yes. said, did you get that in? Yes. Nice. The question is, did you manage to get Mr. Carr eating one? No, 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 no. That's why I like him. Raise it, raise it top up to his ear. Just to get measured on first. Thanks for seeing them. This is the second drive at Whitfield, uh, a drive called Kingswood Rock. Absolutely fantastic drive. Stuart's just turned it up a little bit, a notch, as they say, with the height of these birds. Some of these birds will range from 50, 60 yards up to as much as 90 to 100 yards. Obviously, we'll be picking the birds out that we think are killable. And uh, as proven on the first drive, the new cartridges, the, the test load from Game Boy are working quite well. This river that we stood outside of now, what you, what you can see on the film, this is the River Allen. Uh, it's a bit low at the moment, and usually the keeper's got his fishing rod in here pulling a few sea trout out, but obviously it's a bit too low, there's nothing running. So it's, it's a stunning location. And it's just a pleasure to be here and you know to be out today and shooting such dramatic scenery. Uh, it's absolutely fantastic.
Now I bet we had eighty more. Yeah. Anybody ever seen old Tom? No. Has no. he gone to ground a bit then? This is the uh, third drive and probably the final drive at Whitfield, a uh, drive known as Common Bank. I'm using uh, the test load again, which has been absolutely fantastic so far. I have a feeling that these are a three or a four, for probably a 41 gram, 42 gram. I did notice uh, this bigger shell, probably you get, a lot, you get a lot less pellets. I think they are definitely threes or fours. Really saw, saw some really high parties on the last drive. Very, very small to shoot yet, and I would think that half of them would have slipped through the pack. I'm not 110% sure, but that could have been me off target, not 40 minutes ago, because I did shoot one or two real uh, stormers uh, as well, so that could have been me. Right, just to explain a few things about uh, our attire in, in the game shooting world. Uh, it's tradition, you don't have to stick to tradition, but it's always nice to do the traditional thing. Socks, shirts, nice, nice shirt, nice tie to go with the shirt, look smart. Also makes you feel better on a, uh, on a shooting day as well. But that is the British tradition. We don't, we don't turn up in camos to go and do a driven day on a, uh, on a really nice day anyway. I like to wear pretty low top so that I can move the gun pretty quick. You don't want clothing that's, you know, it's going to snag it up. People buy these awful waxy coats as stiff as a bloody cardboard box and they can't move the gun then. So you need to be pretty fluent with your clothing as less as possible really, but as long as you're warm and comfortable. 